Hey guys, my name is Clifford Paul, and I'm the animator and director of CG for the mini matchup Power Rangers vs. Voltron. How I got involved, I've been a long time fan of Isma Hawk, and through Patreon, I was able to set up a one on one live chat with them where I told them I was an animator and they needed an animator. One of the big things that we were all discussing when we were originally doing this video is like, how are we going to design, how are we going to make the designs of the robots look? How are we going to make them move? What are they going to look like? And, uh, and, and the amount of detail that we're going to put into them. Should we go more of like a Transformers route or should we go more of a Pacific Rim route? So the robots are huge. They're as tall as buildings and I really wanted to show the weight of those robots while we're on Earth. While we're in space, anything is fair game. So I had the robots going as fast as possible, going and doing all the types of crazy moves they couldn't do on Earth. The inspiration for that is very similar to the Pacific Rim, where on Earth they're actually really, really heavy versus something like Gundam, where they're zipping around and flying around in space without an issue. Originally, uh, me and Cliff had had this conversation. We reached out to our friend uh, Wee Din. Uh, you can follow him at we underscore arts on uh, Instagram. He makes amazing artwork. And he's actually the one who designed uh, the Power Ranger helmets and designed our robots here. So this video was primarily CGI and, and visual effects driven. Uh, Jeremy was the one who handled the cockpits. Uh, Melissa was the one who handled the HUDs. Cliff and, uh, and his team at Roundtable Studios, Devin, Garrett, Farij, uh, they're the ones who actually did all the CGI. So after we took it from Wii's design, we gave it to Farage, who came up with these amazing 3D models for the project. Next off is Devin, who used those models to come up with these beautiful 4K textures to give it the look and the style that we're looking for. Guys, if you if you're watching the video, just like pause it at some moments and then zoom in and look at some of the detail in the robots. It's pretty ridiculous. Even I didn't notice how much detail was in these things until I took a second and actually like watched it all uh, frame for frame because the amount of detail that Devin put in this is ridiculous. I mean, there are all these little tiny panels here. There are all these little lights everywhere, all these little extra lines. I mean, the amount of detail here is, it would just like look at these joints. I mean, look at even the, in the face, you see all this line work, uh, this little like chin piece. I mean, he really, if, if you guys actually, you can't really tell really well in this shot, but you can actually see that there's like paint scuffed and chipped on the nose. After we took it from Devin, we gave it to Raj, who came up with these really complex rigs for the robot to give it the movement that we needed. So the workflow of this project, I actually used Autodesk Maya, where I took in the rigged 3D models and put them together to be animated. I use a process called Pose to Pose Animation, where I pose each in particular robot in a certain stance and then meld it and mesh the animation in between once it was cleaned. So the way you normally do is you set up the characters first and then you animate the camera towards the character's movement. Because of the timeline for this project, I actually did where I set up the camera first and then animated the mouse inside. This is actually also my first time working with live action composites, so I really wanted to make sure that my animation post-production also worked with the workflow of the live action post-production. 
So one of the biggest parts of this video was the visual effects. I mean, the entire video is basically CGI and visual effects driven, and Cliff and Devin and, and the guys, they went and did all the hard work and all the heavy lifting, and, uh, and I really just kind of came in and, and threw in some polish uh, for a lot of this stuff, you know, adding some light rays, some lens flares, uh, compositing in. Uh, I added light wraps. Uh, light wraps are really big for this video. Uh, if you're not sure what a light wrap is, it's basically adding uh, an additional sort of layer or halo around the subject. Uh, usually anything that's green screened, you want to add a light wrap because it helps to blend uh, the subject with the background. So if you want to add a light wrap into your project, it's actually fairly simple. There's a ton of tutorials online, so we're not going to go through how to do it on here because all you have to do is type in light wrap tutorial. Now, uh, the thing about light wraps is like there are plugins that do it or you can do it on your own. So uh, there are apps like, uh, or uh, there are plugins like Primat Keyer from Red Giant, which will also have a light wrap plugin built in there. That's, that's a keying software, but uh, for the purposes of this video, I actually did the light wrap manually for every single shot just because there wasn't really any green screen work. It was just robots, so, uh, and they're CG models, and we made sure that the background was always separated from the actual robots themselves. That way, when I went in to go and add uh, the, the thrusters and, and the fire in the back and the sparks and stuff in the back of the robots, we literally just like put a lens flare behind there, and it was really easy. Traditionally, if, uh, if we were doing this in a normal video, uh, and this was actually footage and it wasn't green screened, we would have to rotoscope, which if you're not sure what that is, it's actually going in and manually like cutting out the character in post and then cutting them out frame by frame. It takes forever. It takes a really long time. So I'm glad, uh, big shout out to Cliff for uh, exporting so many layers for us to make this project really easy. We had the robot layer, we had the uh, earth layer. We had a separate layer that was just for the atmosphere that you see. So if you're watching the video and, you're, and uh, you'll see that there's like this halo around the earth and that halo is a separate layer uh, because if you if we exported it with the actual earth then it, it's, it, it was just too harsh, it didn't look good. So that's a separate layer. We have a separate layer for those, that asteroid segment, that's its own layer. We had a layer for space and a ton of other like little layers that were really just for our purposes, uses uh, in post-production, stuff that you won't actually see. The entire video is, is almost completely CG. Even this shot right here that you're looking at is, is an entirely CGI shot. This is a still image in the background. It's a still image in the background. And uh, let me actually turn off these robot layers. And this is really just a still image. I composited in some sweet clouds Let's turn those off. And, uh, and this is like some city. It's not even in the US. I think this is in Japan. And you can see right here. <laughs> Which actually, this is not the original image either. I actually customized this one. So if I actually open this up. Oh, this is one thing that you're never, that you, you actually won't uh, notice in the video is this is a still image, but I, I added these little cars moving in the background. Just so, uh, just so the video would have a little bit more detail. So uh, when you're watching the video, there's all these little tiny details that I try to put everywhere. So when you're watching it, if, even though you don't see those little effects, your mind picks up on them and then it, that's what helps make it look more natural to you. and I designed the HUD for the Voltron cockpit. First, when I was approached with this, I decided to just binge watch the Legendary Defenders one on Netflix to really get a grasp of kind of the modern interpretation of Voltron. I went through and I screenshot every single scene that had a HUD or interface or any interaction. Then I began to just extrapolate shapes from it. There's a lot of reused elements, so there was a lot of consistency that I was able to pull from. And since it was alien tech versus um, earth tech, it was really interesting to separate the pieces. After looking at all of the screenshots, I noticed that since it was a cockpit, a lot of the interface was curved around the pilot, so they were easily able to see what was going on. It wasn't just like a harsh line. I had to learn how to make a curve element, and this is actually my first HUD that I ever did, so that was quite the undertaking, but it ended up working out pretty well. 
So I ended up working really closely with Jeremy on this. He's the one that actually built all the physical and 3D pieces for the cockpit, which actually made me super excited because I didn't even know you could build stuff like that. So before delving into visual effects, I was actually a UI and user experience designer for tech products. I started visual effects about two months ago, so this is my first real project. And I never thought I'd be able to say that I built a HUD for a giant robot, but that was pretty sweet. I was excited about that. <laughs> Since I had a background in UI design, it definitely helped that I already knew a lot of the software, I just didn't know how to make it move or how it composited with uh, footage and stuff like that. But knowing a user experience, knowing how stuff is streamlined, like just knowing where a button goes is actually a lot more research than you think for a website, right? So being able to have more creativity but still have that practical nature uh, in the interface was really exciting for me. Like I said, I did a bunch of screenshots for all the HUDs, but once I got the footage, I took a screenshot and started shaping out where the components would lie or the different panels. But then like, I started pulling out components from the show itself, so a lot of these are actually in the original designs for the Netflix Voltron series. And when I was also looking through the screenshots, I just started pulling out components that I saw, error messages or targeting systems or even conversation panels. Uh, so if you see on the left-hand side, you'll be able to see a couple of new things where I added movement, like arrows moving and this kind of doing its own thing. Activating interlock. Dinotherm's ready. Infracell's up. Mega thrusters are go. Let's go, Voltron Force. So I used a lot of plugins and stock elements for this video. Optical flares from Video Copilot was a big one. I, I think I used that in almost every single shot for this video. Uh, another one was uh, Trap Code Shine by Red Giant. That was, again, another one that I was using in almost every shot to help uh, blend the video, uh, blend the effects. But I also used some stock elements from different websites, and I was very lucky that uh, that Action VFX was able to uh, send us a lot of elements that I was able to use. I used a lot of their smoke and dust elements uh, for when uh, for when you see Voltron land on Earth. And uh, and one of the biggest sets of VFX, and this was actually like really saved my butt on this one, was effects I got from FX Elements. And the thing that's so awesome about these specific effects is they are zero gravity pyro effects, which are basically zero gravity explosions, zero gravity sparks, and that is freaking huge when you're talking about doing uh, doing like a space battle because uh, a lot of the, the stock assets you have are, are grounded uh, you know, on Earth and with, with gravity and all that. So uh, if there's an explosion, you see the fire is coming up. If you see sparks fly, they kind of fly with the wind. Whereas in space, they just go out and everywhere. You know, there's no set direction. So it was really cool having elements that would explode. So if you guys are ever doing any sort of space battle, definitely check out FX Elements. And then if you're a VFX artist and you're just starting out and you, need, and you can't afford a lot of the big uh, plugins or stock assets, Definitely check out Action VFX. Those guys actually offer a ton of free effects for you to download to help you get started. So definitely support all these guys. Uh, we couldn't have made the video without them. And, uh, and another big shout out to FX Elements because those pyro effects saved my butt on this video. So another big thank you and shout out to our entire CGI team at Roundtable Studios. Uh, you're watching this on their channel, so make sure to subscribe to them. And uh, and big shout out to Cliff. He's the one who led the project, animated the entire fight, which is so good. He actually uh, lit the fight, which setting up lights in 3D is a whole other beast than actually animating. So, and I think he did a spectacular job on that. Uh, Devin Gee Sr., again, with the textures. I cannot rave enough about how good those textures were. Garrett was our technical director, Garrett Austin. He actually built a, a render farm with a ton of computers, and uh, which actually helped uh, render everything out. And shout out to Devin, who actually helped uh, render a ton of stuff out as well. I mean, we had a huge team working on, on the entire video, and it was just a lot of amazing and talented people. And, uh, and thank you all again for watching and thank you all to the team who actually made this project a reality you know me and uh, uh me cliff and noel sat down and talked about this uh almost a year ago now and it's it's really cool to see it all come together and come out and, and see your reactions and 
And so we're all super grateful for it. And uh, please continue to share the video, share this video, subscribe to Ismahawk, subscribe to Roundtable Studios. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Daniel Lachef. Follow Ismahawk on Twitter at Ismahawk. And make sure to like us on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Ismahawk. All right, uh, special thanks to my beautiful girlfriend, Vanessa, who happened to suffer through all of my <laughs> pain, having to go ahead and animate this project. And also special thanks to my brother, who actually did the storyboarding of this project to make sure that I actually kept my things together. Um, special thanks to another friend of mine, his name is Kyle. He actually provided me his place to go ahead and keep all my stuff there together. Um, special thanks to him. Thank you guys for watching. It's been a real fun blast. I had an amazing time working on this project. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm actually trying to go ahead and start a YouTube channel using animation like this. So if you enjoyed what you've seen in the video, hit over to that like button or subscribe button somewhere down here. And, um, and I'd love to see you guys again.